Hello. Hey, how are you doing? This is the Elliot Confidential Podcast. My name is Aiden. I'm Christopher Elliot's son. Uh, in fact, uh, not only do I get noticed as his son very frequently, but people often tell me that I look even better than my father. So it's a pleasure <laughs> to be here. Pleasure to talk with my beloved father. You know, there's no way that you can look better than your father if he didn't have good looks in the beginning. So I have to thank him for that. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so we're just going to jump right into this podcast. Wait, 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 wait. You forgot your brother. Oh, yes, he's also here. Uh, my brother, Aaron Elliott, is here. Do you want to give yourself an introduction, Aaron? Hello. Well, I'm Aaron, and I'm just here. I'm going to give my commentary where necessary. Okay. And I'm Dad. Yeah. And uh, I publish this newsletter, and this is a podcast unlike any that you've ever heard, I promise. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry to, to, to you know steal no, the, the title okay. of presenter that, from you. That's all right. But today we're just going to talk a little bit about Cape Town in South Africa and our experience here. Okay. What do you want to talk about first? I think that the first thing that we did here really goes to show... So it wasn't actually in Cape Town, but we went to Aquila. Tell me about that, Aiden. Oh, my God. Well, first <laughs> of all, we just came off an overnight flight. And if anyone's been on an overnight flight, you would know that you don't sleep on overnight flights. And they wanted us immediately, the first day we were here, to go on a safari. And I don't know, Dad, you were the one who actually did that. I, I stayed did. over a night before I yes. did that. So what's your experience with that? I don't know. It was, uh, we were on this private game reserve and we saw a lot of animals and I don't remember very much of it because I was so out of it. I think I had slept maybe two hours the previous night. I would assume it's not very memorable. Yeah. Well, it was. I mean, I remember doing it, but I don't remember the details because, mm. but we did it the next day and I remember a lot more. Mm, yes. Well, I did it the day after that and I can tell you I remember a lot, particularly because of how close we got up uh, with the animals. There was an enclosure, well, it wasn't really like an enclosure, it was just a fenced off section of nature because it was pretty large, where we got to see some of the lions and we got up really close. They were just sleeping right next to our truck. We've stayed in a lot of hotels while we're here. We've stayed at two Radisons, red and blue. That sounds like something from the Matrix. Yes. Red or blue? Well, we chose blue. We chose red and blue. Well, I didn't actually, know you could do that. Well, we went to blue first, I believe, right? No, no we went first. to red. Okay. And I'd like to know what Aaron thought of red. Uh, the red was, uh, it was, I think the red is more of the economical option, hip option. Like we've been into some of those sorts of hotels. And Very hippie. Really, yeah. uh, they're, they're nice, but they're, you know, they're just a bit smaller. And then you got, what did you think of blue? I think blue is more yours. Yeah, yeah. Blue, it, it's, I would say, slightly more luxurious. I mean, we were at the top floor, and it was basically an apartment. It wasn't even a hotel room. You had a kitchen, a living room, mm. and there were three separate bedrooms for each of us. So it's a much better option if you're looking for something more spacious. Oh, and also the people who work there are so nice. I mean, our chauffeur lady was just, they, they like to hire very nice old ladies. Our first hotel here, though, was the Taj. Yes. What did you think of the Taj? Uh, you know what? Uh, we were coming just off of the United Arab Emirates, and it uh, reminded me of them a lot. And I actually kind of got my hopes up because I'll be honest with you, the hospitality here in, in South Africa is not the same as the Middle East. The Middle East has the probably the best hospitality. Best in the world, yeah. But the Taj, it definitely reminded me of that. It did. It was yeah. a very good experience. Good service. They were levels. so nice. Yes, and they had a restaurant too. Mm -hmm. Aaron, tell me a little bit about. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. the, the Bombay Brasserie, which is uh, the Indian place that we had dinner at. Yeah, so Bombay Brasserie. There are only, I think, three restaurants named that in the world. So this is based off of the Bombay Brasserie in London. So it has a worldwide recognition, and the only other Bombay Brasserie is completely unrelated. But it actually was a really great restaurant. They have the full courses and... It really is great. I like it. Yeah. And and I didn't, you're the cocktail or the mocktail guy. You mm, you edit yes. the website cocktail.com. So you had a wide selection of cocktails there. Mm -hmm. What did you think of those? Yeah. So I did a story uh, for Valentine's Day and I took some pictures of various different mocktails at Bombay Brass Street. And I have to say, first of all, the bartender there is very creative. I just told him, go crazy, be creative with the uh, garnishes, and just make it in general cocktail.com ready or Instagram ready, a lot of people like to say. So just make it outrageous, and he did. 
Uh, but at the same time, it was still very straight, very classy. You know, it didn't go uh, too crazy. It was very contained. And also, at the end of the day, the drinks just were absolutely incredible. And if you want to read more about that, go to cocktail.com. Oh, shameless (laughs) self-promotion. You know, we started this conversation talking about wildlife. I think that I saw a lot of really nice wildlife when I went on a kayaking. But it wasn't kayaking. It was actually racing. It was a kayak. It was an ocean kayak Ocean kayaking, yeah. We did two things. Uh, well, we really had three outdoor things that are noteworthy. We went to the top of Table Mountain, and we took the aerial tramway or the April aerial cableway up there. And then we went. Then we did uh, ocean kayaking, and then we also went on a helicopter tour. Oh my God, the helicopter tour! It was so short, <laughs> but it felt longer. Okay, the I'll helicopter go, tour. The, the helicopter tour was pretty awesome. Amazing. Yeah. Great, great pictures. Great view. Great pictures. We'll and post those. You know, they were also very nice. You know, they and were. now everywhere that people treat us nicely, I just think of UAE because of how great the hospitality was there. But seriously, if you're here, definitely try and go out on a helicopter tour because you're going to get some incredible pictures and just a great view in general. All right, now there were three museums that we went to that I would consider a uh, cornerstone of the uh, experience here in Cape Town. One of them was Robben Island, where Nelson Mandela was imprisoned for 18 years. The other one was the District 6 Museum. District 6 was, of course, that neighborhood that was uh, leveled by the apartheid regime. And then the third part, the third uh, museum, is the Zeitz Mocha, which is the uh, Museum of Contemporary African Art. So, so uh, do you guys have any favorites of those? Oh, definitely the District 6 Museum. And that's just because the guy who gave us the tour was so enthusiastic about it. Hell, he actually lived in the community. And he was just talking about it as like this pillar of, you know, well-integrated society. Everyone there was different. Everyone there came from a different part of the world, but they were all working together and getting along. And just the way he described it, he was so enthusiastic. It was just very infatuating. So I definitely enjoyed that, probably among uh, above all else, just because of how engaging the museum was. Yeah, personally, I didn't think that the District 6 Museum was all that optimistic, unfortunately. So, I, But I think that it really closely resembles a heritage museum. You know, it talks about the ups and downs of a community that's still struggling to get back to its land. But really, my favorite museum has to be the Zeitz Mocha. Mocha stands for the Museum of... Contemporary African Art. Yes, Museum of Contemporary African Art. And it had a lot of really interesting art. I think that it's kind of like the subconscious of Southern Africa almost. I liken it to that. They had a lot of interesting art. I think that Dad remembered more art than I did. Why don't you talk about some of the art? There were two exhibits there. One was on Rwanda. And uh, then the other one was a, an exhibit that kind of took a more humorous look at race relations. Uh, and uh, I'm still processing both of those. I don't really know what to make them. I mean, Rwanda, of course, is terrible. Though the exhibit that made light of race relations or of race issues, um, I don't know. You know, we're in the United States, we don't really do that so much. Um, so it was an interesting thing for me to see. But I think I understand South Africa better now because I've been to that museum. Yeah, it seems like half the people who you share that one image to um, are like, oh my God, that's kind of funny. And the other one are, are like, You should probably oh, explain what image oh, you're referring oh, oh, to. Oh, this is, this is not good at all. Well, I, yeah, it's very easy to explain. <laughs> it's this picture of this African man who is taking, I think, an axe to a white guy who is... Uh, dressed up as like one of the original settlers in the U.S. And behind them all is an oil pump, an oil rig out in the ocean. And the caption at the top is, sometimes it's okay to eat people. Yeah, this is really a little bit strange. But anyway, <laughs> though, I mean, I, th- I think that if you want something different, this is definitely the place oh, to go to. Oh, it's different. This it's place different. Is different. It, it, <laughs> it has its own thing that it's doing. It is, it's definitely not... It's definitely African. It's definitely interesting to say the least. <laughs> I am I'm gonna stay, you know, in the middle on this. I, I don't have an opinion on it, but I'll tell you what, the first reaction I had to that was just to burst out laughing because 
it's just so ridiculous to say something like that. And also just how clear cut like the yeah, we'll whole post racism a, aspect yeah, we'll, of it is. Uh, we're going to post a picture of that. Post, put, yeah. yeah, you got to post a picture of it here. Oh, otherwise, there's, there's no con You can't really explain that. There's, you need to see that. Otherwise, there's no context. Uh, I think people wonder when they hear about South Africa, they wonder if it's safe because a lot of Africa is not safe. And then, but people always say, well, Cape Town is safe, but is Cape Town safe? Do you guys feel safe here? Yeah, I feel yeah. safe. I think that especially with COVID, I feel very safe. Anytime I enter a building, they spray us down with hand sanitizer. Mm -hmm. I mean, and then also when you go out in the street, just so long as you go to the right areas and you're in a group, you know, no one bothers you. So it's well, really great. Well, some people bother. Yeah, there are, there are uh, people who are residentially challenged who will come up to you. But it's like any major American city. You have people there to deal with that, you know, maybe uh, they're not doing as well as you are economically and they want something from you. Yeah, that's yeah. about it. But that comes with basically every major city every major in city, the yes. world. So. Yeah, pretty much. Every city we've been to, pretty much. Yeah, I would basically say treat it like you're walking around Philadelphia. For the American listeners out there, which I assume are the majority, you know, if you've ever been to Philadelphia, you know what it's like. There are definitely some... Uh, economically challenged people out there who are begging in the street and you got that here too and you know it's it's not anything extreme it's not like you're in the shanties or something but well it's we've there. been to the shanties yes we did well we should talk about that it was actually something that really scared me going to the shanties but we did it and we we survived and they were actually really nice to us we found a lot of people who are doing really entrepreneurial things yeah starting their own coffee shops their own bike repair places um, I would say also worth doing. Yeah, uh, just make sure that you have a tour guide with you because they work with the community and we were told before we went in there that oftentimes if they see people who aren't really part of the community with no one uh, who is part of the community with them, you know, a lot of people can get Definitely uh, take a tour, tour guide. Territorial, yeah. you, I could say. Go to get a tour guide. Yes, yeah, get a tour sure. guide, and, but at the end of the day, it's, it's a lot different than what you would expect. Go during the daylight, too. Yeah, daylight, yeah. too. But yeah, very, very cool area, very unexpected, very entrepreneurial. So, uh, okay, let's talk about food. Yeah. I, and you've had some really good food experiences here. I think there's one falafel restaurant that you keep going back to over and over again. Tell us about that. Yes, Wild Market. This is uh, my first time talking about Wild Market. It was... What? <laughs> <laughs> you you, you what? can't stop talking about Wild Market. My I can't God. stop it's talking about Wild Market. It's not your first time. It is my first time. Why do you like Wild Market? Shh, it's my first time talking about Wild Market. <laughs> uh, whatever you They say. had incredible, uh, incredible hummus, incredible falafels. They, their falafel wraps are just absolutely delectable. I don't know what they put in their hummus or if it's like a, a lemon juice or maybe like a hot sauce or something. But oh, my God. Okay. Oh, my God. Aaron, how about you? Favorite place here? W well, words cannot describe how good it is. All right. All okay, right. I'm, I'm sorry okay. to interrupt you, but words cannot describe yeah, yeah, okay. how amazing that falafel okay, wrap okay. is. Okay. Well, I'll let you continue. Right. Well, anyway, I think that really there's, a, there's, there's so much diversity in Cape Town in terms of food. Like Cape Town, of course, loves falafels. If you've been to Cape Town, they'll give you, they'll give you so many falafels. Oh man, Aiden has a story about that, but that's for another time. But I think that one of the things that I realized is that you can get just about anything. So we went to Oranje Zicht. I think that's Oranje Zicht, and that's in, the farmers market. Yeah, that's the farmers market uh, in VNA Waterfront, and basically they had they had vegan. It was vegan crepes. It was actually galette. And I have to say, they were really good. I had no idea that you could get those. And the people there were speaking French and all that. And it was like, wow, this is amazing. This is so international feeling. And we tried the galettes, and they were just so good. They were really delicious. I think mm. my favorite meal, and I don't really eat dinner usually, but my favorite meal was at the Bombay Brasserie. The food there was really you could tell they put a lot of work into it and it wasn't too much. You know, you go to some restaurants and they just give you way too much food. But at this one, you could tell they were putting some thought into it and they weren't overfeeding you. And I liked that a lot. And that it was really good Indian food too. Yeah. Food here is absolutely inexpensive. It's so inexpensive that actually sometimes you order too much food. For example, Aaron mentioned it beforehand, but I think this is a story for now. 
I went to a random place in one of the shopping centers here for Century some food. City. Yeah, we were yes, in we were in Century City. City, and I just wanted a falafel, and I also was very hungry, so I wanted to be full. And I look up at the price for the falafel sandwich, and they had half for what was it like 15, thirty-five rand, fifteen rand, and the the full for thirty-five rand. Which is like the equivalent of a dollar and fifty cents. So it's I'm $2. like, a two dollars. And so I'm like, okay, I need multiple of these because these cannot be that big. So I'm like, lady, get me four of your full falafel sandwiches. In fact, actually, you might want to add a little extra there because I'm feeling really hungry. And I see them make <laughs> the sandwiches, and they just smother that thing filled with hummus, filled with sauce, filled with other toppings, and then on top of that, they just dump a ton of falafels on top of that and that was all for what we would pay for a single person um to go to the grocery store and get yourself staples it's ridiculously inexpensive hotels here can sometimes sometimes cost less than you know 70 60 dollars um for, yeah nice hotel is like room. 50 bucks a night i know yeah. and insane. when you order food on uber eats the delivery charge is almost always nine rand, which is less than a dollar. Yeah, yeah 66 cents. That's 66 I mean, cents. The reason that the prices are so low is that the South African economy is not doing so well. It's doing well compared to the rest of Africa, but it's yeah. not doing very well. So you can come here and really get a lot of vacation for not a lot of money. Mm -hmm. If you can get past the 15-hour plane ride from Newark, we talked to a flight attendant who was had just flown in from Newark on United Airlines. It's 15 hours to get here, and it costs it costs more, of course, because it's a longer flight. But if you can if you can come here, if you can get here, get past the 15 hour flight, your uh, vacation dollar will go much farther here. Yeah. So so whether it be you know ordering too many falafels or getting a ridiculously cheap chauffeur. You can just be, rest assured that when you come over to South Africa, you're going to be getting some really good prices. Yeah. Um, bottom line, I think I would come back to South Africa. Mm -hmm. Same I, here. You too? Yep. Yeah. And, you know, you guys have traveled with me for the last five years. We've been traveling together, and we're now here for almost two months in Southern Africa together. So you will probably hear more from us over time. But I wanted to do kind of a free-form discussion about South Africa to start the podcast because I thought it would just be fun. So we'll see you guys next time, hopefully soon. Yeah, hopefully yeah. soon. All right. Yeah. And thank you for listening, guys. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening. Ciao, everybody. <laughs> Ciao. Ciao. I'll Ciao. see you later. Bye. Goodbye.